Here I'm going to derive the mean and variance of the least squares slope estimator beta 1 hat in simple linear regression. I'll also briefly discuss the assumptions of the model, and I'll discuss what assumptions I'm making along the way. Recall our simple linear regression model, where we estimate the parameters beta naught and beta 1 with beta naught hat and beta 1 hat. Epsilon is a random error term, and we make certain assumptions about it. We typically assume each epsilon is a random variable that is normally distributed with mean zero and constant variance sigma squared. We also assume the epsilon terms have zero covariance, or in other words, they're uncorrelated. This is a bit of a different meaning from independence, and I don't want to get into the details of that here. In actuality, we typically assume a multivariate normal distribution for the error terms, and that they're uncorrelated, and, well, that implies independence. So if you want to think of those error terms as being assumed to be independent, I think that's okay. I'm going to use a number of notions in the derivations, and the next slide is a non-exhaustive list. We will use the linearity of expectation, that the expectation of a plus b times y is a plus b times the expectation of y, where y is a random variable and a and b are constants. We'll also use the notion that the expectation of a sum is the sum of the expectations. And we need to know that the variance of a plus b times y is b squared times the variance of y. Note that the additive constant does not affect the variance. We're also going to assume that the x values are fixed and not random. x is not a random variable in these derivations. In reality, in regression settings, x is often a random variable, and in those spots the derivations are a little trickier, but we end up with the same results as far as the mean and variance are concerned once we condition on x. As a first run through, we often carry out the derivation assuming the x values are fixed, rather than random variables. That's not to say they don't vary, the x values won't all be the same. They are fixed in the sense that they are taken to be known values. They might represent a specific dose level set by an experimenter, say. Recall the least squares slope estimator, which is the sum of products over the sum of squares of x. And recall that the sum of products can be written this way, and that the sum of squares of x can be written this way. I showed that in detail in the video where I derived this estimator. I'm going to write the slope this way, as this gets it down to just the y sub i as random variables and we don't have to deal with y bar, which is also a random variable, and having it there makes life a little more problematic. Let's get to it. Let's first find the expectation of beta 1 hat. First note that in the denominator, the sum of squares of x is a constant, and can thus be taken outside the expectation. And we know that the expectation of a sum is the sum of the expectations so we can take the expectation inside the summation. The x's are assumed to be fixed, and so they too can come outside of the expectation. Now we can sub in our y sub i from the model, which is beta naught plus beta 1 times x sub i plus epsilon sub i. Here, epsilon is the only random variable beta naught, beta 1, and the x's are fixed values that can come outside of the expectation. At this point, we make use of the assumption that the expectation of each epsilon is zero, so that term disappears. Now, if we bring the summation through, breaking up the beta naught and beta 1 terms, we get this. Beta naught is a constant that can come outside of the, of the summation, and now we make use of the fact that the sum of these deviations for any variable is always zero, so that term drops out. And beta 1 comes outside of this summation. Now we have beta 1 over the sum of squares of x times the sum of squares of x. Recall that the sum of squares can, of x can be written in either one of these two ways. So those terms cancel, and we end up with beta 1 and the least squares estimator beta 1 hat is an unbiased estimator of beta 1. What did we assume along the way here? Not much. We assumed that the x's were fixed, which made our life a little easier, and we assumed that the epsilons had zero mean. We didn't need any of the other assumptions of our linear regression model here.
Now let's drive the variance of beta 1 hat. We want to find the variance of beta 1 hat, which is the sum of products over the sum of squares of x. First note that, once again, the denominator is a sum of fixed values of x, and is a constant. It's not a random variable. We can pull that outside, but remember when we multiply by a constant, the variance gets multiplied by the square of that constant, so that term is squared on the outside. Now we're dealing with this quantity, the variance of this sum. Let's once again substitute our model expression for y, beta naught plus beta 1 times x plus epsilon. Now on the side, let's note that we can split up this sum in this fashion, the first term being nothing but constants, but as an additive term. There's no random variable involved, and thus that additive term does not affect the variance. We can cancel that out, and we're left with this. We've made very few assumptions so far, just that the x's are fixed, and we've assumed the functional form of the y's. But this variance becomes a bit complicated unless the epsilons have zero covariance. In general, the variance of the sum of ci times a random variable epsilon i, where the ci's are constants, is the sum of the variances of those terms plus two times the sum, for all i not equal to j, of ci times cj times the covariance of the epsilon i and epsilon j. That can get a little ugly, but it's doable if we know the covariances. And things get a little cleaner when we express this type of thing in matrix form. But here, the covariances are assumed to be zero, which really simplifies things. This term goes away, and we're left with the usual idea, which is what we know happens under independence, that the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances. That's not surprising, because independence implies zero covariance. But zero covariance does not necessarily imply independence. Strictly speaking, we don't need independence of the error terms here. We just need zero covariance. In other words, uncorrelated errors. So, under the assumption of uncorrelated errors, the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances. This last line here is the first line on the next slide. Now within this term, the term involving x and x bar is a constant. And so that can come outside of the variance, but when we do that, once again, it needs to be squared. It is at this point that we use the constant variance assumption, that the variance of each epsilon is assumed to be sigma squared, and so we can substitute in sigma squared. Sigma squared is a constant, so it can come outside of the summation. Now note that the denominator here is the square of the sum of squares of x, and the term to the right is just the sum of squares of x. So we have one sum of squares of x cancelling, and we're left with this. The variance of the slope estimator in least squares regression is sigma squared over the sum of squares of x. What did we assume to find this? Once again, that the x's are fixed, but here we also assumed that the epsilons had constant variance and are uncorrelated. We didn't assume normality, and we didn't assume a mean of zero in this variance derivation. For completeness, I'll now briefly discuss normality. Note that beta 1 hat is a linear combination of the y's. In other words, it can be written in this fashion. And if the epsilons in our model are normal, that implies the y's are normal, since beta naught, beta 1, and the x sub i are fixed values here. In addition, the epsilons are also often assumed to be uncorrelated with a multivariate normal distribution. This implies the y's are multivariate normal and uncorrelated as well. In the end, our slope estimator beta 1 hat is a linear combination of independent, normally distributed random variables. The independence part arises either through directly assuming independence of the error terms, or assuming a multivariate normal distribution and uncorrelated errors, which implies independence. That latter part might not be obvious, but it's true. And since a linear combination of independent, normally distributed random variables is itself normally distributed, the slope estimator beta 1 hat is normally distributed here.
So if we have normality of errors, independence, and common variance, in the bitter end we have this, that beta 1 hat is normally distributed with a mean of beta 1 and a variance of sigma squared over the sum of squares of x. We'll use that sampling distribution of beta 1 hat to develop appropriate confidence interval and hypothesis testing methods for inferences regarding beta 1. Note that the central limit theorem applies here, and even if the epsilons are not normal, if the sample size is large enough, the slope estimator beta 1 hat will be approximately normal.